bright. That's pretty much the review. But of course, a light is more than just its output. So I have more thoughts on it than that. This is Aperture's most expensive light to date, coming in at $1,890 for a single unit. It's their flagship fixture, for now at least, and they're producing modifiers specifically for this light. It's not a flash in the pan, it's the first entry in what I assume will be a wide line of pro fixtures, but we'll get to that moniker here in a bit. If you haven't purchased one of these already, or you're just waiting for yours to get sent to you off of the back order, the question is, is it worth the money? One of the best things about Aperture is that they send their lights in some fantastic cases. And this one is the best yet. It's got wheels, hello, thank you, and a collapsible handle that makes transport an absolute breeze. In the case, you'll get your power supply slash control box, your AC power cable, a three meter head cable, the awesome Aperture lightning clamp, the 600 series hyper reflector, and finally, the light itself. And the light head and the yoke are both made of metal. It's well, it's built like a tank. Now, Aperture's previous lights were no joke, but this feels like it's on another level of build quality. Aside from the build quality, the design of the yoke is very smart. That little bend that you see allows you to use larger modifiers with this light and still tilt down quite a bit. Speaking of lighting modifiers, you can use Aperture's Light Dome 2 and the Light Dome Mini 2 with this light. The only thing is you need to avoid using the inner baffle because that could cause overheating issues with the COB. Similarly, if you want to use the spotlight with this, that is an option, but you need to leave all of the leaves open and not close it off. Now, one of the things Aperture says you should never do is use the Fresnel 2X adapter or the barn doors that you usually would use with the 300D Mark II. Both of these are not designed for the heat output of this light. They will ruin your COB. Do not use them. But not to worry, Aperture has designed the Aperture F10 Fresnel and barn doors that are made specifically for the 600D. And when those get in, I've already got them on order, we will be doing a review of those. Just like the Nova P300C, the baby pin receiver doubles as a junior pin, so you can use this with whatever stand you'd like. There's also a little place to hold the securing screw when you're using it as a junior pin. Both the head and the ballast are built with a weatherproof design. As long as your ports are covered with either rubber stoppers or you have a cable plugged into them, you should be able to withstand a light rain for quite some time thanks to the channels that are built into the head units and the waterproof fans both here and in the power ballast. I haven't tested this particular feature myself, but I've seen people using this light out in heavy rain and even snowfall, so it seems to be doing well. The head cable has a different connector than any of Aperture's previous lights. It's still XLR, but the collar is different, which contributes to the weatherproofing. It's also very satisfying to plug in. The Bowens mount release button is much improved on the 600D. It's a simple push to release and the tension oh, is perfect. The power ballast is a big, beefy boy. They've made the most out of the space, though, and added a multitude of connections. You have your AC Nutrix power port on the bottom, just like all your other aperture lights, and a three-pin XLR DC power port for external block batteries. Now, they've added a lot of networking as well. You have DMX in and out ports here on the bottom, and then the unit itself has wireless DMX built in. There's also on the side an Ethernet port for ArtNet connectivity and a USB port for firmware updates. Now, over-the-air updates through CytusLink will be coming in a future firmware, but for now, you'll need to use a flash drive. In my experience, however, newer flash drives do not work well with this unit. You'll want to dig around for an older, smaller capacity flash drive to have the best chance at success. On either side of the ballast, you've got battery connections for 14.4 volt, 26 volt, and 28.8 volt in either gold mount or V mount, whichever one you pick when you buy it. Another exciting feature is that this power ballast can also be used to charge your batteries when it's plugged into AC power. Any batteries that use a universal charging method can be charged by the 600D Pro. Now there is a caveat to this. Unfortunately, that means that batteries with proprietary charging methods like IDX can't be charged by the 600D Pro's power ballast, but hey, it's better than nothing. It's also worth pointing out that batteries won't charge if you're running the light beyond a certain threshold, somewhere around 70% depending on what curve you have for your dimming. 
Moving on to control, on the control box, you can adjust the light in 0.1% increments, or you can spin the knob faster to go up quicker. You can also press in on the knob to jump up in 20% steps. If you press on the menu button, you'll have access to all of your options. You've got DMX mode, which I won't go into here. Next is dimming curve, where you can choose from linear, S-curve, exponential, or log. With the newest firmware, you have four fan modes, smart, high, medium, and silent, the last of which will limit you to only 60 watts of output. I usually leave mine on smart because I'm lazy. Next is studio mode. And let's talk about this for a second because this is actually the default when you take the light out of the box. When you plug it in, in studio mode, if it's on, it will power the light on and start blasting whatever you're pointed at with a bunch of light. And this is great for a permanent studio setup where you just want to flick a switch and turn on all the lights. But for location work, it's easy to forget that you have that on and accidentally blind all of your talent, or so I've heard. Next is the control system, where you can choose how you want to control the light. Then there's your language settings and your update menu for firmware updates. A quick press of the lighting button will take you back to your home screen, or you can press the effects button to go into all the preset effects on the light. In here, you've got all your standard effects, paparazzi, fireworks, faulty bulb, which has a fun typo, lightning, TV, pulsing strobe, and explosion. All right, enough messing around. How bright is this thing really? I took my Sekonic 850A and took a few measurements of both the 600D Pro and the 300D Mark II for reference. All of these tests were done at one meter from the COB to the wall where I was measuring with each light set to a linear dimming curve. At 100%, the 600D produces a staggering 100,000 lux. At 50%, you're getting 22,000 lux. And at 25%, you're getting 4,200 lux. For the 300D, at 100%, you're getting 47,000 lux. At 50%, you're getting 6,300 lux. And at 25%, you're getting 1,500 lux. Now, unfortunately, I don't own a color meter, so I can't tell you how accurate this is to the 5,600 Kelvin that it's advertised at. But one of these days, when I do want to spend $1,200 on one of those meters, I'll go through and I'll do a test on all of these lights and see how they all compare and how accurate each of these COBs is. Aperture says the fan noise is less than 30 decibels at one meter. It's probably not a light you'll often use that close to your subject anyway, but I've been able to use it as a key light and not really had any issues with the fan. As a matter of fact, I used it as a key light for my 200D review and I did very little audio cleanup in post. You can take a listen to what that sounds like right here. Eventually, I think I'm gonna pick up a 100D and a Light Dome Mini uh, for my live stream setup so I can just clamp it to the wall and get rid of the stand that's taking up floor space right now. Same thing with this interview, where I used it with a Light Dome Mark II as a key. In this project, I needed to light the whole kitchen so we could move around and shoot quickly. I shot the 600D through a shower curtain and was able to bring up exposure for most of the room. I just needed a little bit of fill on the other side, and that wasn't because the 600D wasn't bright enough, it was just because I needed a little bit of light coming from that way to reduce my contrast ratio. I did something similar for this barbershop shoot, although here I did also use a Nova P300C to add a bit more level through the same diffusion. And to really put this thing through its paces, I put it up against the sun. Now this shot is in direct sunlight. It's not all that flattering a shot, so I added diffusion just outside of the frame. It's much nicer on her face, but the exposure has dropped down too much. So we'll switch on the 600D. This helps even out the exposure a little more, and honestly, I probably need to stop down a touch to put her skin tones where they should be. So we know we can beautify the daylight. That's all well and dandy. But what if it's night and we need a fake sun? I wanted to see what we could do with just this one light. Here, you're seeing my living room with only the ambient light available. Then we strike the 600D Pro and voila, morning rays. And keep in mind, this is just one light with a bit of haze for atmosphere. That's all we've done. So for all of these shots, we never move the light. I just ran it at 100% and then took the camera around the room. I think it can very easily pass for morning light with no problem. Now, I couldn't take my light any higher up on the stand because of the covering on my porch, but to fake midday, I'd probably want to get things a little higher and have two 600D Pros shooting through a large diffusion, at least for an area as large as my living room and dining room. Let's talk a little bit about the Pro part of the 600D Pro. Now, Aperture has already announced that a standard 600D is coming in the future. Certain features will be exclusive to the Pro model and missing on the standard. These include wireless DMX, the Ethernet port, the ability to charge batteries on the ballast, and the weatherproofing. 
I'm not sure how much that's actually going to drop the price, but we'll have to wait and see if it's enough of a drop for me to purchase that instead of another Pro for my kit. The thing is, Aperture's next cheapest light in their COB lineup is the 300X, and that runs at $1,200, which really only leaves about a $600 range that they could probably price this light in because you can't price it cheaper than those when it's got twice the amount of power. So my guess is we might end up at the $1,500 range, and with that kind of price difference, I'd probably just go for the Pro anyway because I'm already over that $1,000 mark and having those extra features future proofs things a little bit. So I don't know if it'll be worth it to go for that lower end one, but we'll see. So to answer our earlier question, the 600D Pro is worth every penny. Aperture has packed a lot of power into this light. To get similar output from another manufacturer, you can easily spend twice as much. And you wouldn't get built-in wireless DMX, Citus Link, or weatherproofing. Plus, it would probably also be a hot light, so it becomes a danger if you have inexperienced people on set. You also don't get a nice rolling case for that matter, so pff, why even buy those? The real question is, who should buy this? If you haven't bought any lights yet at all, probably don't start here. For just a little more, you could get two 300D Mark IIs for your kit, which would open up a lot more options for you. If you're already using 300Ds at full output all the time, I'd say this is a great investment. If you're a fan of the book light look, this is a great investment. If you need to blast a lot of light through windows for strong beams, this is a great investment. But understand this, it is an investment. While it's a good deal, it's not a cheap light. For many of you, this will make sense to rent rather than buy. For me, the closest rental house is an hour away if traffic is merciful, and a lot of my shoots end up being last minute, so owning made the most sense for me. In conclusion, the 600D Pro is a great light. I'll probably be purchasing another one in the near future for scenarios where I need to blast light through multiple windows, and I'll be just as excited to open the second one as I was the first. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I appreciate all the feedback that you guys have given. Leave comments, ask questions. I would love to interact with you guys and talk a little bit more about this awesome light. Hit like and subscribe if you love this stuff and we will see you on the next one.